seems like forever. I'm sorry to have neglected you for so long. Um, oh, my camera's moved. I had it as much. Oh, I had it all lovely, darlings, and I've ruined my background. That's better. I know these things matter to you as much as they do to me. Um, anyway, yeah, so I've been gone for a while, I'm sorry. I hope you haven't forgotten who I am. Um, I haven't forgotten you, believe me, let me tell you. I really haven't. You've been, been on my mind the whole time. Um, anyway, I'll tell you what's been going on. Um, a few bits and pieces, really, since my last video. I um, was working for a bit, um, temping at my husband's school at Cuggs's school. I'll tell you his name, I call him Cuggers. You might have noticed that. His name is Richard Cugley. Cugley. Cugley to rhyme with ugly. <laughs> a lot of people call him Mr. Coogley and things like that. It's, it's wrong, that's not what it is. It's Cugley. So um, he gets called Cuggers. Um, so if you, if you hear me saying Cuggs, I mean my husband. Anywho, um, yeah, I was working at his school for a bit. I did about a week's um, temporary cover on the reception desk, which was lovely fun. But it meant that I got very slowed down with sewing because, well, you know what I'm like, I'm really slow anyway. Um, and if you throw a bit of full-time work into the mix, I just can't, I can't do anything else. I, I go to work, I come home, I eat and I fall asleep. That's all I can muster. It's pathetic, yes, I know it's pathetic. Anyway, um, that was a nice little week. And then it was spring break. Um, so spring break started two weeks ago. And, um, you know, Richard was off with me and we just had a few fun times. And what happened in the middle of that was that my sister, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have um, already found out about this. My sister rocked up from nowhere. I didn't know she was coming. Um, and she, um, what happened was, we were just lazing around one morning, not really getting anything done. And Richard looked at his phone. Now I'm talking about my husband loads. I keep calling him Richard instead of Cogs. Isn't that funny? Now you know him. Anyway, he's got a few names. Anyway, he was looking at his phone and um, he went, oh, uh, oh, I've got the date wrong on this. And I was like, oh, what? what have you got the date wrong on? And he was like, look at your phone. And I was like, why? And he was going, just check, have you got a message there? And I was like, I've got a text from Jen, my sister. And he, was, uh, he said, yeah, read it. And he had this funny face on that usually means he's been an imp of some description or done some kind of trick or something. And I was thinking, what? I was like, what have you done? What, what are you doing? He's going, nothing, nothing. I haven't done anything. Just read the message. And I opened the message and um, Jenny had sent me a photograph out of a plane window. And you could see, um, you know, it was an airport beyond and there was all raindrops on the window and it was grey. And she just said, guess where I am? Away. I'll be there. I think it was. I think she was landing about half past ten in the night, and I was like, "Oh my god, I've got to clean this house." The flat was a mess, so that was good. It gave me the impetus to get the um, flat really nice and clean and tidy. So anyway, Jen arrived uh, that night, and I had her with me for I think it was about six days, five or six days, not long enough. Oh, but it was still such a lovely treat because I love having Jen to visit. She's my favourite human being after after cugs well no along alongside cugs and my mother and my dad sorry people in my life i don't have favorites all i'm saying is i, I really love jenny <laughs> um, so she's a great visitor and it was just fab having her here um but of course i didn't do um much sewing although what I did was, um, you might have seen this on Instagram as well, um, the spare room where I have my sewing room, we have like a spare mattress that's in a, a, store, a big storage room that we've got in the flat as well, which is great. And um, so I put that back in there and made it into Jenny's bedroom for her. So I moved all my sewing stuff out here into the living room. You can see I've got my the big cutting table behind me and I lowered it down um, and left my little sewing table in 
Jenny's room as a dressing table for her and it worked out really well anyway I haven't put everything back together again yet so here I am out in the living room with all my sewing stuff here which is you know it's fun for a change um, so yeah when Jen, Jen was here I didn't get to do very much sewing however I had been promising that I would make her some napkins for like a year. She asked me to make her a peg bag and I finally did that and gave it to her at Christmas. She bought the, fa she bought the fabric for it last summer when we were at home in the UK and um, I made her this peg bag. I'll see if I can find a photo and share it on here because it's dead cute. It was made to her exact requirements. I had ruffles on it and embroidery and everything. Anyway, um, she had leftover fabric, so she was like, well, will you make me some napkins with it? So I got to do one. It's not a standard size napkin. It's actually a little bit smaller, but I think we, we decided that was more practical. Anyway, sadly, there was only enough to make, I only had enough to make three. So what I'm gonna do is make the another three in plain white, and we're gonna do an applique white heart there and an applique pink striped heart on the white one, so she'll have six napkins. Anyway, let me show you my mitered corners. Really rather proud of these. They're nice, aren't they? What do you think about that? I was rather pleased with them, and I think it's dead cute fabric. Anyway, it's not dressmaking, so it's a bit boring for you probably, going off topic there. However, that was one thing that I did get to do for Jen, um, but I've still got to do the white ones. Um, so that was one thing that happened, yeah. Anyway, I thought that this video was just going to be about my latest make, which was the Megan Nielsen Flint Collots. Um, and I am going to mention that, but, and I thought, oh, it's going to be a bit boring, there's nothing else to show, but I've got, lo I've ended up with loads of things to show you. Not fully made things, but stuff you might like to see, like, um, kind of little hauls, a little tiny fabric and trimmings haul as well. So let me go back to my notes. It's that time again, Lou checks her notes. Um, yeah, I'm gonna show you my gorgeous Megan Nielsen flint collots, which I'm so pleased with. Okay, I'm going to move you back. Let's get, get you repositioned, audience, and then we'll um, show you them, okay. Okay, guys, so I've been sitting down, so they've got slightly creased. Um, but these are my Megan Nielsen flint collots, and let's see if I can stand on this chair. Woo! Ooh, nice big butt shot for you there. Um, I think they're lovely. They're a lovely flowy, lightweight denim. Um, I think the length's really cute. It's, you know, kind of the style of the moment, isn't it? Um, and they're very, very comfortable. And they were a pretty simple make as well. For the, f are, are they the first pair of, Trousers, I've made, they're not actually, I've made a few of the trousers, but they're the first pair of sort of more like tailored looking trousers, although they're not really, there isn't really a great deal of fitting to do, uh, thank goodness, because I can't really do that. Um, so yeah, you can see here, they've got the lovely little tie fastening, which I absolutely adore. Um, that's something that makes me very happy. Um, a really high waist, um, which I like because that's the smallest bit of me and I just quite like that it sits on the natural waist. I probably could have made them slightly smaller there, but because the, the fabric's kind of baggied off a bit, you know how Dan can sometimes do that. Um, it's got these lovely little dart tucks, uh, which I think create a really nice shape. Um, the pockets are fab, they're big, which I love. Um, and I lined them in this rather sweet leftover fabric I had from a, a very old project a long time ago. It's got little birds on it. There's a bit of yellow. Let me see if I can find one. Hmm. Oh, it's not really showing anyway. That one's yellow and the rest are white. Um, yeah, I, I really like the way they turned out. That was my bum for you. <laughs> Um, I put some hanging tabs in. People laugh at me for this, but this I, is very important to me. I love making them yellow as well. Um, I like hanging things off tabs if possible. I just think they hang more nicely, unless you've got a hanger with grabbers, right? Um, yeah, so these are my lovely Megan Nielsen Flint Collots. Um, yeah, I'm gonna sit back down again and talk to you face to face. So I was really pleased with how they turned out. You might wanna see the fabric a bit closer again there. Um, yeah, they were, uh, 
a pretty easy make. I've got to think back now to the process of making them because it was ages ago. Um, but it was, yeah, it was really quite simple. The instructions were great. I think I made one mistake, um, which I easily rectified. I cut, you have to cut out the waistband pieces um, on a single layer of fabric right side up. Yeah, and I cut them up on the wrong side up. So I put the markings were a little bit out, but I just altered them and it was fine because the pieces were the, the right shape anyway. Um, what else happened with them? Yeah, I, I can't really remember much else. It, it, it was pretty simple and they were a lovely easy make. I think if I, I'd probably make them again. I think if I was um, back at work again, I'd probably make them in maybe like a block color, black um, or navy or even a bright red or something like that. I think they just look really nice, perhaps with the, the buttons. You know, you could do two buttons there instead of um, the tie. Um, so a lot of options for it and I loved it. I'm really glad I made it. So it's another one of my make nine done. Tick, ka -ching. Okay, so um, other things that I wanted to show you. Uh, oh, I had my machine serviced. I had my sewing machine serviced. Interesting tidbit of news for you there. Um, long overdue. And because this machine, I've had it, I think, for about two or three years and it's never been serviced in its life. Anyway, it only costs £10 to do it and it seems to be working fine again, which is fab. However, one of the reasons why I did that was because I was thinking, um, sorry, my hair's really fluffy today. I've been doing a lot of cleaning. I washed it this morning and I spent the whole morning blitzing the kitchen. Um, and I had to tie it up in a top knot and it went all in a funny shape. Anyway, I, I don't care. You don't mind if I've got cave woman hair, do you? You don't mind. Um, yeah, so I was going to make the fire, wasn't I? Just a reminder out of this lovely stretchy, stripy stuff. And um, I just could not get my sewing machine to work with it. You can't adjust the presser foot pressure on that machine. Um, it's kind of got quite limited stitches. It does do a zigzag, but you can't adjust the width of it. Or the length i get confused between stitch length and width anyone else anyway you can't adjust you can't adjust that on that machine it's just set lengths and that's the end of it um so it just was not playing ball with this stuff so i'm gutted i still haven't made anything from the stretch book it's killing me but um the overlocker has been serviced as well so really i've got no excuse i should try and make things on that but I am really scared about just, you know, actually making up a garment on the overlocker. Not just finishing the seams, you know, like making the thing from start to finish, like you can do with stretch fabrics. I'm just frightened of doing it. Anyway, maybe I should have a go. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, that's where I'm at with the fryer. However, when I was in the sewing machine repair shop, they had like loads of um, trimmings and buttons and things. So I just got magpie eyes on and just bought some stuff that I had no plan for. Um, and I'll show you that now. So this was the first thing. It's a load of um, rainbow colored pom-pom trim, which I just think is so pretty and cute. It's got little gold bobbles in between the pom-poms. Um, apologies for my nails as well. These have been on for literally well almost a month now I think um, I need to get that sorted out tomorrow maybe anyway um, yeah so this is the pom-pom trim what do you think I should do with it folks I have no plan no idea I was just drawn to it and I just thought I need that in my life I don't know what for but I need it so I bought it because um, it was dead cheap it wasn't expensive um, but what would you do I was thinking maybe I could trim if I made like a white, this isn't on the, any of them needed lists or anything, but if I made like a white shirt, I could like tr put trimmings on the collar maybe, or I don't know, pops across the top of the pocket. You tell me what you think, guys. Um, anyway, I just think it's delightful and dead cute, and I love it. The other thing that I got, and this is my real favorite thing, was this, this trimming, which, Again, it's like rainbow colours with gold sparkly bits 
in between and then look at the bonus opposite side. I mean, this is like the wrong side, but I think I might like it more than the right side. What do you think? It's got gold twinkle background and then the other bits of the colours on the other side. Um, I absolutely love this. I'm a sucker for colour and especially rainbow colours. I really, I'm so drawn to it. And the ideas that I had for this were, I thought I could um, use it to sort of completely cover, make a clutch bag and completely cover it with this stuff. Or I could even cover it with like uh, ruffled or pleated layers of it. Come sa. See what I mean? So lay, like row after row of ruffled or, or pleated um, trim. What do you think? The other idea I had was to make like um, a semicircular shaped bag um, with ruffles of it like that. What, what great descriptive skills I have for you today. I hope you can picture what I'm talking about. Um, I just thought it would just be really sweet as a bag. Um, but yeah, if you have any other thoughts, let me know what you do with it. What would you do with this stuff? Tell me. Um, yeah, anyway, I love it. I think it's gorgeous. So that was another one of my unnecessary purchases from the sewing machine repair shop. Um, so another thing that happened, oh yeah, I got a little bit of fabric at some point since I last spoke to you, which was this. And um, this is just some very basic kind of shirting material. I think it's poly cotton. It's not 100% cotton, um, but it's got a lovely, um, very fine green and white woven stripe in it, which is really right up my street as well. You can tell it matches my nails. Um, and I've got, I forget how much, in fact, I don't think we knew how much was left on the roll. It was the last bit of the bolt. And I got it for the equivalent of four British pounds. <laughs> this whole piece was four quid. It was 20 dirhams here, 20 Emirati dirhams. So I was really pleased with that. And I, my idea for it was to use it. Um, do you remember me saying that on my Make Nine, I was going to make a Bloomsbury blouse, Nina Lee Bloomsbury. Out of this stuff. I plan to make it out of this stunning Liberty um, fabric, which my aunt, aunt gave to me. Um, but I was a little bit frightened about going for it first time on this. So I thought, oh, I'll make a twirl in perhaps plain white or something. Anyway, I think this would be the ideal thing for a Bloomsbury, wouldn't it? My practice run uh, twirl. And um, I got some green buttons as well. Again, cheap as chips. I bought about 53 bags of green buttons. <laughs> But each there are three bags and each one's ever so slightly different so I couldn't decide in the shop so I just bought them all um so yeah um this is going to be a practice run of the Bloomsbury however I'm not going to be getting onto that for a little while yet because my next make is going to be the penny dress That's the shirt dress it was on my make nine list, you'll remember if you saw that video. Um, and I'm also gonna use it for the Instagram hashtag a little lawn party, which is run by Atia of the Bright Blooms and handmade by Ditsy Tulip, whose name I've forgotten. I'm really sorry. Um, I'll put links in the description below anyway. And it's a lovely little challenge. I did mention it in another video. So I've got my PDF printed out. I've chopped off the bottom, um, corners and um, that's my next thing that I'm going to do after have, I've had a bit of lunch today um, after my eggs on toast I'm going to stick this little beauty together and perhaps um, trace it off and then maybe even start cutting it out today I probably won't get onto that it's 20 past one now well we'll see <laughs> um, and as a reminder in case you'd forgotten this is the fabric that I'm going to use for that which is this lovely quite lightweight cotton that I got from Kiev in Ukraine and I've had it sitting around in a stash for ages so I could use it for that other hashtag make your stash is it sew your stash make your stash I'll look that one up and anyway I could three hashtags one garment what do you think about that anyway while I'm doing that obviously I'm gonna have to think carefully about the um polka dots because they're in stripe formation so I have to cut it out quite carefully to make sure 
that it all hangs nicely and sits right. So yeah, that's the next thing that I'm going to make. So with any luck, I'll be showing you a video on that in the next couple of weeks, at least, I hope. And what else do I have to tell you today? Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Oh yeah, another idea. I've gone off plan. I've gone off the make nine. Excuse me, I'm just going to have a little sip of tea. It's time. I've been gabbing at you for a while. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so I decided um, that I want to make um, the Jessica dress by Mimi G Style. Because she um, made, it's one of her PDF patterns and she made it available for free yesterday or the day before. Um, just as like a thank you to her viewers thing or you know followers so i all you have to do is go onto her website and make sure you signed up to a newsletter and then you can access that pattern for free and i've downloaded it it is such a nice pattern it's really so up my street and honestly i think two days before i found out that that pattern was going to be available for free. I didn't even know about that pattern actually, let me say that. Anyway, about two days before that I was um, having a little wander around the shops and I was in Mango and I saw um, a sundress that I took a photograph of and I thought I'm going to copy that, it's so lovely. I'll put a photo on here. Um, and yeah, I thought I want to copy that anyway then. Mimi G said, here's my PDF, Jessica, free. It's the same dress, viewers. It's the same flipping dress. Every detail, sweetheart neckline, little straps, button down front, gathered skirt, square patch pockets. What else? Princess seams. I mean, I was just like, this is just amazing. So, um, what I want to do with it is... The back panel, I've got this notion that I want to um, do shearing on it. Um, I'm not, if you've got any tips for how to do that, because obviously I'll be replacing a normal sized back panel piece of a bodice. Um, I was thinking I would just cut it out double the length, sorry, double the width and then shear it. However, how am I going to make the top of it work? Because it's faced, the top edge is faced and you have to put the straps in between that. Give me your ideas on how I could make that work. Maybe I won't do the shearing. I just, I had a sundress with a sheared panel at the back once and it was just so fab because it makes it, you, you keep that fitted shape, but it's still comfortable because it stretches and it moves with you. So I just loved that aspect of it. Um, so yeah, that's my idea for it. And this is the fabric that I'm going to use for it. I had an amazing stroke of genius thought. This is actually a duvet cover. Now I know when people make dresses out of duvet covers, I think they like buy the duvet cover and then make a dress. I've had this duvet cover for about two years and we have like used it as a duvet cover. So is that a bit skanky of me to do that? I don't know, but anyway, I don't want to use it as a duvet cover anymore because it doesn't go with our bedroom decor. <laughs> so that's why I'll show you. Um, actually, I'm going to show you the pillowcase first. Um, so, you can see it kind of has, I suppose I'd do it this way. It's a white background with red stars, like geometric stars on it. And um, they've got these vertical lines kind of when you look closely, they're there. So, you know, it would be kind of like this effect. There'd be buttons down there. Um, do you think that's going to work nicely? Tell me your thoughts. What do you think? Um, I just think, you know, it's a it's a basic cotton. It's the perfect weight for that dress. Perfect as a sundress. I've got a massive piece of it because the duvet's huge. You know, I just thought, why not? What do you think? Um, but yeah, tell me your thoughts on how um, my idea, you think it will work with the shearing. Is that doable? Am I kidding myself? Tell me what you think. Um, yeah, so that I'm going to squeeze in somewhere because there's another little reason that I'm going to do that. So it's not off my make nine. I'm starting to feel like make nine pressure already. I'm thinking, oh God, I haven't, I've hardly done any of them. Oh. But, um, you know, life gets in the way, right? 
Um, yeah, so that's the Mimi G style dress that I'm going to make. Um, the other thing, final thing that I'm going to tell you about is a lovely girl that I follow on Instagram, who loads of other people follow, um, her account is called I Seem So Happy, and her name is Chantal. Um, and she always gives me lovely feedback, and she makes loads of fab stuff. She's got a really busy life, two little boys, and she just makes so many things. I don't know where she finds the time, but they're all fab. And she, she and I both have a bit of a taste for the 70s. Anyway, she hacked her Tilly and the Buttons Mila dungarees into like a wide leg, flared leg. And it just looks so lovely. And I was like, how did you do that? I want to make dungarees. And she told me. Anyway, since then, I think that I'm going to use a different pattern I think I'm, for this idea. I mean, it's, it's really is still an idea. I don't have fabric or anything. But I want this 70s shaped dungarees. And I think I'm going to use this as a simplicity pattern. I'll, I'll link to it below. And um, I want to use that for the, these dungarees, but in my head, I imagined, right, red, I know that's bright and mad, but I love it, red with uh, one of those um, 70s silver zips that goes all the way down the front. So like lose the side fastenings, lose the hip fastenings and just have zip, a zip that goes all the way down from the top of the dungarees to like where a fly would end with a circular pull, right? That's what I want. Anyway. I typed into Pinterest the other day for a bit of inspo around this idea that I'd had. Um, red zip front flared leg dungarees. The first thing that came up was the thing that was in my head, a literal presentation of it in front of me. And it was designed by Alexa Chung. So it seems that Alexa and I are on the same wavelength, naturally. Um, so it was linked to Matches Fashion and um, I clicked on that and I don't think they're available anymore. They were like about 270 quid or something bonkers like that. Um, but yeah, um, anyway, all of Alexa Chung's stuff on Matches is incredible to die for. If you fancy some gorgeous 70s old lady styling inspiration, have a look. It's gorgeous. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll put a photo of those dungarees on here to show you. It's just... The seed of an idea at the moment but I'm imagining myself walking around the streets of Liverpool when I'm back home in the UK in the summer just loving life in those dungarees tell me your thoughts okay um, it's so nice um, to be back and saying hello to you I apologize for the massive break um, I hope this video wasn't too long and boring I can see I'm getting to 29 minutes here it will be slightly edited down but I had a lot to tell you um, yeah, I hope you're all well and life is treating you wonderfully. And um, yeah, I'll be back on hopefully very soon to speak to you again. And um, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and do subscribe so you can find out when uh, whenever I post a new video. And of course, follow me on Instagram if you're into that kind of thing as well. Um, yes, lots of love to you all and keep stitching.